Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Middle Complex here and today we've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Ritter RSK MK1 G2 Mini. It seems like everybody has handled and reviewed this knife and even the people viewing it are like, yeah, we already have one. <laughs> so I'm super late, um, but I still want to take a look at it. I still want to give you guys my thoughts and for people who have not heard of this, you know, it's definitely something I, I feel like you guys should take a look at. First off, uh, this was sent to me by uh, a Therapeutic Edge and Women Carry Knives. They both have their own YouTube channels. Uh, please take some time to go check them out, subscribe, and then come back. I promise I'll still be here. They have excellent contact, uh, content. They are wonderful people. Uh, give them your time, absolutely. And um, also, follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'd also like to thank my generous patrons. Thanks so much for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and some other benefits, there's of course a link down in the description. Your support would mean the world to me. Let me get something out of the way real quick. Every other day uh, in my comment section, somebody is complaining that these knives are not in stock anywhere. They're saying, you, you talk about that all the time. You talk about how good it is, but I, it's not in stock anywhere. You can't buy them. This is a KnifeWorks exclusive. That means that you have to go to KnifeWorks to get it. You can't find it anywhere else. <laughs> I'm sad. It sounds so condescending, but that's what that means. When some, for anybody who doesn't know, I'm not trying to be an elitist. When it's when you know when a knife is a blah 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 exclusive, it means you can only get that knife at that place. So you can't go to Blade HQ and get this knife. You can't go to DLT Trading and get this knife. Or whatever. You have to go to KnifeWorks. It's in stock. You can buy it. <laughs> so there we go. I'm so sorry. I know for everybody else who knows that, I'm like, I'm sure they're like, geez. Yeah. But just to let people know, I want you guys to be able to get your hands on these things. So that's where they're, that's where they're at. All right. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Uh, up against the Ontario Rat model. Oh no, let's let's measure it first. I'm sorry. I always sometimes I, I miss that. So this is a smaller version of the full size. This comes in at uh, 6.8 inches overall. Blade length is kind. Of, it always looks like my measure is too far out here. But you have to remember the camera angle kind of does this thing. So in my light, I'm right at the tip. Blade length is coming in at. It's definitely under three inches. So that's fantastic. Uh, blade length is a blade length uh, is about 2.8 and the cutting edge is also about 2.8 inches. So that's wonderful, uh, for legality reasons. That's going to make a lot of people happy. How about some size comparisons now up against the Ontario rat model one, the rat one is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see there, it's not a tiny knife, but it definitely is a small knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the full size bench, bench grade, bench grade, bench made Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? There you go. That's the difference there. Basically, the Ritter Hogue is the, about the same length and it's very similar to the bench grade uh, bench. What is wrong with me today? It's because I'm sitting down. I can't say bench made. God. Benchmade Griptilian and the mini RSK MK1 G2 slash Ritter Hogue, whatever you want to call it, is basically the same size as a mini Griptilian. Um, the full size is eight inches overall, so there's a pretty significant difference in size, both in length and in uh, height of the handle and blade. Um, last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3, another size comparison. All right, if you are shopping for the Para 3, you might also be considering the mini RSK. The Spyderco Para 3 comes in a little longer at about seven and a quarter inches overall, but it is worth pointing out that you do get a little bit more cutting edge. And it's, yeah, it's about a maybe a quarter inch, something like that. So if you're shopping, you know, for this guy, consider this guy as well or vice versa. All right. So how's the action on this guy? It's very similar to the full size RSK. In fact, it feels exactly the same. It's just a little bit smaller. It's very, very smooth. This is something that both knives have um, the benefit of over the Griptilian, it's just, it's noticeably different. The, the Griptilian is plenty smooth and it gets smoother over time, but this is just something that a lot of people point out. And it's the reason that they call this a better Benchmade Griptilian is because it, everything just functions a little bit better. Uh, the axis lock feels a little bit smoother. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the feeling of the quality, the action is a little bit better and overall fit and finish, you know, on average is, it tends to be a little bit better. 
And that's the case here. The action's fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. We'll get out my tools. You can pick up my tools down in the description right at the bottom. They are not expensive and they are very recommendable. Much like the actual bench grade. I might, what is wrong with me? Bench grade. Why all of a sudden am I saying bench grade? I'm losing it guys. Bench made. <laughs> Much like the actual bench made griptilian, uh, the, um, Pivot is going to be a T10. Um, and that, yeah, that's definitely the case there. And then the rest of the screws are T6. You guys know my thoughts on... Wait. No, no. This is not a bench grade. A bench made. Man, I'm seriously, I'm considering stopping this. I'm not... It sounds like I'm doing it on purpose at this point. This is going to be one of those reviews where people, you know, constantly remind me like, remember that weird review you did where you couldn't stop saying bench grade? Oh my God. Now I have to leave it in there. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just, I don't know why that's coming out of my mouth right now. Yeah, um, the uh, the nice thing about this versus the the other Griptilian or the standard Griptilian is that it's actually using T8 body screws. Glad that I caught myself there. It's very important. It does have a lot of screws, but at least they're all T8, which means disassembly of this guy is gonna be a little bit more friendly uh, than the, uh, the, the regular Griptilian. So that's nice, I, I appreciate that. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile. I'm going to try not to ever say Benchmade again for the rest of the review. The thickness up against the pair of three, you can see there, it is actually a little bit thinner. than the, is, is the full size thicker? Yeah. Okay, so the thickness of this guy, I thought they were the same. It actually is thinner than the full size Ritter Hogue, so that's cool. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at carry profile up against two knives that are a bit awkward that nobody ever seems to complain about. The Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, you can see there in terms of length this way, it's nowhere near as long as either of them. And in terms of height this way, it's nowhere near as tall. This is not a cumbersome knife. And the fact that it's even thinner than the Para 3 um, makes me uh, happy. And um, I'm sure many of you will not have a problem with that. Uh, let's do... Um, Blade stock thickness on this guy. I'm going to guess it's probably about 110,000, something like that. Blade stock thickness on the, let's get it back here, make sure it's full thickness. Oh, it's even, it's even less than that. Wow, that is not a thick blade at all. That's nice because the geometry of the blade is already, it's already ground to accentuate cutting performance. So this one's going to be even more slicey than the full size. Weight. 2.68 ounces. It's under three. At that point, it's trivial. This is an ultra lightweight knife to me. Knife to me. Um, and then on the inside here, by the way, you can pick up my flashlight down in the description. We do have those cartridge liners. This I might need to. We might need to turn that down just a bit so you guys can actually see what the heck we're looking at here. <laughs> oh my gosh! Watch me. Everybody, come to the Metal Complex YouTube channel and watch him fumble around with his flashlight, and I still didn't get it to be any dimmer than it is supposed to be there we go it's 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 okay now there you go you can see the cartridge liners <laughs> so they're not full stainless steel liners it's a cartridge liner just like the griptilian um but yeah coming in at 2.68 ounces that's fantastic whether you are used to carrying the para 3 lightweight or the, the the mini bug out of the bug out right i mean those those are even lighter weight but again under three ounces trivial uh, if you're wearing skinny jeans, athletic shorts, you're wearing regular work pants, regular jeans, whatever you're wearing, this is going to be a friendly knife. It's one of the weirdest knife reviews that I've done. <laughs> it's just all the weird hangups and stuff. Um, did we get through all of that? I think we did. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the anatomy here. So in this case, we have orange G10. Both the mini and the large come in both orange and black. So if you're like, I'd like a mini, but I don't want orange, you can get it in black. Those are the only two colors that I know of. I don't think they do any other colors. I'm sure they will. I know that they have black blades, at least for the full size one, which is just gonna be out here for the remainder of the review. Um, the full size one, I think, has a black blade option. Um, and if not, then they need to. But uh, these need to come in more colors. I'm gonna say that right now. That That's gonna refresh these, because like every other person in the knife world seems to own one of these. Um, I might actually buy another one if they came out in a cool, like a dark forest green and a blue and a red, right? 
Yeah, let's do some more colors. Definitely, that would be super cool, right? The orange and the black, it's been the same way with the Doug Ritter knives for so long. A lot of people, if your thing is orange and or black, then yeah, there you go, then all your needs are met. But I'd like to see these in some more colors and I don't think it would be that difficult to do. I think that'd make a lot of people happy and some people would probably buy uh, an extra one. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, this guy is in orange and much like the full size one, we have this excellent texture pattern that will absolutely provide grip no matter how it is that you're holding it, how it is that you're using it. it. That's a wonderful texture pattern. It's also contoured. I talked about this in the review of the big guy. Um, that's excellent. This is one of the best ergonomic designs, you know, coupled with one of the best possible texture patterns, like for actually using a knife. It's just one of the best, you know, that exists out there. It's excellent. Um, the other nice thing is, is that despite it being a smaller knife, me, somebody who wears an XL glove can absolutely get a full purchase on it. Um, and, uh, the, the jimping up here is, is wonderful to connect with in terms of, you know, just your thumb. It's not aggressive. It is definitely thinner than the full size. So it feels like there's a little bit less traction there. Something else, you know, here that's interesting is that the, um, the studs on the full size one are a little bit more polished than this guy. They did like the tumbling on the main, the flat part of it. Um, but the, the, now also the outer texture of it is different as well. You see that on this guy, it's got the adjustable head and on this guy, it doesn't. I wonder if that, if they change that, you know, with Ritter Hoag's in general, but that's just something to point out there. The tumbling appears to be, eh, it's a little more heavy on the smaller one. It's a little more light, light grain on this one. I think this edge was put on by, um, either a therapeutic edge or women carry knives. It does not appear to be the factory edge, but I, yeah, I'm going to guess that's not the factory edge. So they probably made it even thinner. It is definitely thin down there behind the edge. Absolutely. Both of these blades are just unbelievably slicey. This doesn't have as much room to drop though. So it honestly feels about the same, uh, even with this, um, this slicier edge. And perhaps maybe the reason that they did that is because they wanted it to be, maybe it wasn't as slicey as I imagined. They wanted it to be better. I'm either way, the blade geometry and profile is excellent. Um, it's going to accentuate cutting performance. I don't think you necessarily need to put a thinner edge on it, um, but it, it seems like they just opted to do that. Um, the uh, This guy here is in M390, and then this guy is 20CV. I honestly don't know if they switched to that. It doesn't really matter. M390 and 20CV are the same thing. There's a slight difference in silicone. You know, M390 has got a little more silicone. Does that translate into a different type of performance? No. Anybody who tells you it does, is and they're... they're they're mistaken. <laughs> That's my opinion anyway. I've never been able to tell the difference if we're talking about the exact same blade, the exact same geometry, and you got one in M390 that's, you know, Rockwell 61, and then you got one in 20CV in the Rockwell 61, right? Because the optimal heat treat is about the same optimal, heavy quotes on optimal. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. Um, 20CV is great. It's one of the best steels that you can get out there, at least by the uh, standards of the knife community, uh, excellent corrosion resistance, excellent edge retention, and it is um, it is emphasized even further by this excellent blade profile and geometry. Other than that, I don't know. Is there a, is it about the same? Yeah, it says USA and Hogue on the same. It's interesting. There's little changes or differences. Um, the uh, hardware on this guy is black all the way through, and the hardware on this guy is satin. Other than the pivot, I would imagine on maybe on the black one, maybe the, maybe the hardware is a different color. I don't know. On this guy, we have the, uh, and by, I mean, I, I'm rushing through a lot of this because I've already reviewed it. The axis lock itself is also, it's been blackened. Um, the standoffs, I believe are the same. They're just a smaller, yeah, they're just a smaller standoff. Uh, the pocket clip is the same style of clip. It's just got a black clip, which I think kind of contrasts better. Uh, this one's got the, the tumbled clip or the satin clip, whatever you want to call that. Because it is the exact same clip and it's the exact same size, I will tell you this. This clip is positioned perfectly. There's more room on the handle. It's not a hot spot. Hot spot. This one, the bill, I mean, the, the pocket clip is excellent. This is one of the best pocket clips out there. It does dig into your hand a bit. It would have been nice if it was the same clip, but just shorter. But okay, it's not really that big of a deal. It's still it's still a great clip, right? And if you own both, I mean, I honestly, I'd like to see this guy with the same black hardware and the same black clip, but the tumbled blade. So, you know, that this way, I, I guess if you own the large and the small and you got different colored clips, you can switch the clips out there modular and that's fine. Um, other than that, I think they're all, I think it's pretty much exactly the same thing. It's got the D-shaped pivot barrel. This is an excellent design, guys. I think you could, you know, guess that this... 
the the only nitpick I have for this guy is that the pocket clip is a little bit lower, uh, and it creates a, for a microscopic hot spot something that might kind of bother you a little bit. But all the quality is still there. This is an excellent knife. It's made in the USA. Um, it, it's great. Uh, even even for people who you know prefer larger knives, this is still great because. If you prefer large knives for the same reason that I do, and it's because smaller knives, it's hard to get a full purchase on it. Unless you have gigantic hands, you're still going to be able to get a full purchase on this guy. There are plenty of situations where this guy just feels a little bit big and I go for something smaller and it'd be nice to have a smaller one in my collection so that I'd have that option. Great knife. And here's the best part. It's, it comes in at 140 bucks. I understand that bigger and better deals are coming out every day, you know, whether you're talking about American production knives or you're talking about foreign made knives, whatever. This still remains to be one of the very best knives for the money in existence. Um, if you're wondering, you know, should I pick one of these up? Yeah, whether it's the large one for 160, which is still a great price, or it's what is it, 155, 160, still a great price, um, or the smaller one for 140. Um, they're excellent. Totally recommendable. Just remember that you can only get these at KnifeWorks. <laughs> you can't find them anywhere else. Um, that's I, that's about all I can say. I just, I really want to see some more colors. Um, I want to see some more colors. And that way, you know, if we have those those ones with the black blades, um, then it, it'd be cool to see, you know, like a blue G10 and like a black blade. Um, that would be really neat. I think that that would draw some more attention to these. Um, and I think a lot of people would like some more colors for sure. But I think that's about all I need to say. Extremely recommendable. This is be this will be going on my most recommended knives playlist. Uh, absolutely. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. So uh, once again, make sure you go and subscribe to uh, A Therapeutic Edge and Women Carry Knives on YouTube. Thanks again for letting me check this out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, oh, and make sure you. Here we go. Let's squeeze this in here. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.